Welcome to What the Truff. Today is kind of special because we're here with one of my best friends, Dingo. I know I always post photos with him and people see him and they're like, what is that? Who is that? Where is he from? Does he speak? He's got long hair, glasses, dresses like he's going snowboarding all the time. Not today. It's Not today. Hot <laughs> Getting hot here tonight. Just so everyone understands. Ooh, cookie. I like that, yeah. Um, Timmy, you want a cookie? But the best times, the best times in my entire life that I've had in the last 17 years have been with Dingo. We traveled the world together. I lived in his house when I was homeless. Before I was married, I dated a bunch of girls, but I had no money. And Dingo would give me money. I used to buy your girlfriend's flowers. So I couldn't afford anything. I had zero, zero dollars. Pretty sick, actually, so when you think about 17 it. 17 years ago. He's one of my best buds. Retired snowboardy ex professional. Still snowboards better than most people I know. But, but we're gonna cook with Dingo. I'm gonna tell you one thing. When we get drunk and go to Dingo's house, he'll just pull out whatever he's got in the closet and just cook the craziest shit. So when when uh, I thought about this for a second, usually I would like want to cook lasagna. Okay. It's my mom's like famous dish, and like I can kind of cook it, but like it takes a while to cook lasagna. And then when I thought about, it, I was like, shit, like our relationship has like been like late night drunk eating. So you do you get drunk and you eat food late night. I like. Uh, a couple, a couple years ago, maybe like seven, eight years ago, I came home super drunk one night, and uh, this may have been before like the Postmates boom, because there was a time when you couldn't just Board grab your food. phone and just fucking have whatever you wanted at the door, 20 to 30 minutes. So you just, you'd have to like make do with what was in your fridge. So that's why I want to say this is like eight years ago. Yeah. And uh, and what I'd had in the fridge, a drunk meal. And what I'd had is, is I'd gone to the fridge and like usually like you would open the freezer and like hopefully there's like some fried shit and you're like, all right, cool, throw it in there. Ooh. That's cool. Um, but what I think I happened is, is there was nothing. So then I had, I opened the fridge and I was like, all right, cool. Like in the fridge, quesadilla, cheese. Maybe a Coca-Cola just because you're like, you need the sugar. Anyway, so then, so so that that's like pretty standard. Yeah. And then you're like, whoa, there's donuts in here. So then you're like, shit. You got these three things and you just make do with what you got. And you come up with like a, a late night drunk meal. So I figured, You've had lots of super famous people on here that act like they know what they're doing and cooking and all good and they're all got their food and their thing and their dish. This is my dish. I figured we'd do drunk cooking. How can I help? I need a pan. Okay. And then so like, trough oil. Yep. Um, all right, so, by the way. It smells like cologne. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know, all that's right. gonna be in my nose all day. All right, Dan, where are you from? I was born in uh, a little town in uh, southern Australia, down by the beach there, down down there's a little place called Mornington, Australia. No one's ever heard of it. Fun fact, right? So it's like Melbourne, south south of Melbourne. I need a paper towel. Okay, I need a paper towel. There you go. <laughs> um, so then when you get a paper towel, you smear it in a little. Okay. Where we come from is like kind of it's a beautiful place, but it's the shit end of the world. Yeah. And uh, the next town over, the fucking Hemsworth brothers. Yeah. Luke, Liam, and Chris, these motherfuckers all lived the town over from where I grew up. So it's like when you're like, oh, the guy that made it from out of here. No, Thor came from like 30 minutes away yeah. from where I'm from, so I'm just a useless piece of shit. Anyway, my dad got me into snowboarding at quite a young age. My brother was super, uh, really gnarly skier. And then I started competing at a young age, and then I was like junior world champion at like age like 12 or 13. And by this time, I'd already been sponsored by Oakley for some time and then I made the trip to America as a teenager. It will end up sleeping on a couch and then going training with the US team, going to the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club. And that's where I met Danny Cass and his brother Matt Cass. And that's kind of where Grenade came from. Mm -hmm. We started a snowboard glove company at a pretty young age. Are you eating one? Yeah. So if you're eating oh, one, we, oh, we need, share I need one. I need two pans. Oh, we can share one. Yeah, yeah, we share one. This, yeah, this yeah, is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, let's go. A lot. Um, right, whack her on. Grenade, so I was like a teenager when that all happened, you know? We moved to Mammoth, 
And uh, I was kind of on my own there, sleeping on a couch, trying to like do homeschool, trying to, you know, make things happen. And we started Grenada pretty young and, you know, it's like that early 2000s. And then, you know, within like pretty short amount of time, uh, in 2002, uh, Olympics was in its second year. Snowboarding was in the Olympics for the second time. It was in Park City. And then Danny, JJ, and Ross Powell were swept the podium. It was the first Winter Olympic sweep for the Americans in 52 years. And then all of a sudden, snowboarding was in the limelight. Mainstream media, fucking money, yeah. corporate America. <sighs> we were just kids. And it all happened pretty quick for us. And uh, it, uh, you know, it, it like changed our lives. You know, I think like, Pre-social media, we ended up having a TV show, the Globe Company, you know, we, you know, we're kids. TV, like, show, TV show was big. TV show was pretty big. We did uh, Fuel 48 TV. episodes. Fuel. Over like Fuel was five shit. years. Yeah, it was just cool, you know? Yeah. But like that it kind of- It was like the original Spike TV before Spike TV. Yeah, like that kind of TV doesn't exist anymore. But it's cool, you know? And then, you know, with the company became pretty big too. We like, you know, shipped to like, I think like 32 countries or something yeah. and we actually, officially sold like over 1 million pairs of snowball gloves. Crazy. Did collaborations with the Misfits. That was and, cool, I remember that. You know, Grenade Carrie Hart, Hart Metal Carrie Militia. Hart. Uh, dude, so you gotta like, what you gotta do is make like a little like, want? like a little trough, just like a little like seasoning almost, like a little. Like a dip? Yeah. Okay. But I'm gonna throw the dip in there. Okay. Maybe with ranch. I, I was literally just gonna do that. You're gonna do that? Uh, you got like a, a, a flipper thing? Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Which one did Steve Urkel touch? I, who cares? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta move it though before. Like, I get it, I get it, dude. All right, man, no I'm take pan, bro. You're the only one that's a cook here. We left the club one night, and Dingo decided to do a 180, like out of valet, like in a Trans Am. Carrie Hart was in the front seat, I was in the back, Dingo was driving. We get to the red light, and I'm like, hey, Ding. He's like, what? I'm like, what is that right there? And it's like, I'm across the street. And he's looking, he's like, I don't know. And we just see the lights go on, just like turning on his car. It was a wall of police. And it was Not like, just one cop guy, like yeah. six of them. And it was a bunch of cops. They watched the whole thing They happen. watched us and when Dingo made a left and we got pulled over in seconds. And it was the one time in our lives where paparazzi saved us because it got so this crazy. This is still on TMZ. I believe yeah. Pink tried to have it, yeah. like pay for it to come down. It came down It was the and one then went time. back up. Yeah, it was the one time where <laughs> I thank the <laughs> Lord, they just let us go. They like knew Carrie. They recognized Carrie, and then not only that, it was obviously the slow media week, but the whole thing's going on camera, so one guy's got me doing the donuts out of the club, coming back, and then peeling down the street, and then getting pulled over and just, just giving in. At that good. point, I was like. It wasn't good. I, I wasn't drinking though, thank God. Yeah, thank like, God. I was on like a sober streak, thank fuck. I was drinking. Uh, yeah, you're in the back seat. <laughs> and then the cop comes running over, and then by this time, the cop's running over, and uh, we're gonna get our ass kicked for saying this. Yes. Um, he's Very like, oh my God, you're Carrie Hot. And then like everything changed. The cop was like, oh sick. The whole thing's going on camera. Not just to make TMZ, it made like the big show. Yeah. Like the weekly show where they're all sitting around. So they're doing like the Dukes of Hazard, like car thing and do this whole thing jump around. Jumping the ramp. Yeah, jumping yeah. the ramp, jumping the ramp. Yeah. And um, we were idiots. And, and, and it became, it, yeah, it was a, Are you gonna close it? It's a thing, it, it was a thing. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna close it. There it is, oh, it's salt, okay. Okay, dang. Oh, how's the sauce? Dang, what's the, what's the average day like with you? I mean, I know, but like. I mean, it can, it can be, it anything. really, it can really be anything. Like you do a lot for Monster. I just went around the world in like nine days. You we literally did, did. We did Sweden, Japan. Japan. And then Sweden, and then, uh, and then no, Zurich, like Switzerland. We took our entire snowboard team to uh, Switzerland, a thing called Hell Week. It was cool, you know, gave out some Diamond Monster chains. Which uh, we What's created. What's up with my diamond jam? Um, okay, that's a good question. I guess I gotta drink Monster to do that. Well, yeah, and like, I don't know, maybe, you know, win an Olympic medal or something. Next game. I could do that. Something like that. All right, so now, now we've got Truff in on this. Well, what's this one? Yeah, but no, like, you know, I'm, I'm very lucky. I've been around Monster Energy since they started and uh, just very fortunate that it, uh, you know, happened to be one of the, Fastest growing stock companies of all time. Yeah. And, um, you that's, know, the that's owners. That's your monster logo. The owners. You get as much as Lewis Hamilton gets paid for a little thing like that? Uh, I think he's got me paid a little, but <laughs> I think my, my deal might be a little longer than his. Yeah. <laughs> nah, we're very lucky to have Lewis Hamilton. 
He is, uh, he's the GOAT. He's the truth. This year is obviously a tough year. You know, Max and Charles are whooping some ass, you know, but you know, it's all what comes around goes around. Um, but I'm very fortunate to be there from the beginning and they still let me do what I do and have major trust in me. So it's, uh, it's cool, you know, and some new times for us. We just purchased Kanaki uh, beer, which is like Dale's Ale, Pale Ale, and you know, it's like six or seven Pale Ales, but we more so did it for the distribution rights to uh, start selling like beer and alcohol and liquor and buying companies and creating our own. And so it's exciting times to own an alcohol company. But yeah, oh, and then you burrito that. And then I burrito that. I need a plate, dude. Wait, dude, I got you. There you go. Are we could just put it on here. Yeah. I can handle that for you. You know your way around the kitchen. There you go. So just because it's me and you sharing it, I'm gonna just cut it. Also yep. the There's it. knives right there behind you. You got any knife tricks? No, and I'm not like Kells and Rook, so don't fucking even try it. I got a knife tricks. Has Kells ever thrown a knife at you? No, because I think he knows I'm not stupid enough to catch it. You know, if I had had Oreos, I would have put Oreo in there. Are you going to buy a Harley? I mean, we don't buy them. They give them to us. Right. Faye's got one. Travis got one. Kel's got one. I was on a call with them this morning. They're at the, for a Harley Davidson family, dude. I want one. <laughs> Me and you are going to get the electric ones. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. Cheers, Cheers to Truff, dude. I'm proud of you. Love you, brother. What are you doing? You hate it? Oh, I hate it. <laughs> At 3 a.m., dude, this is fucking gold. I guess you're right. It's kind of like the fry, the, the, at Disneyland, the, 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 mm. the. It smells like Disneyland. I'll give it out a seven and a half. Out of what? 10. That's fine. Right. Cause it's like, it's super sweet and it's salty. I could never eat one of those. I just spent a weekend at EDC with Dingo and he scared me. He was walking around with a liar, li li liar. He, he, he flew in on a helicopter and was there for about 18 hours. Was not there the whole time. Oh, I know that. I flew in to go with you to EDC. You, you won't were... camp with us. No. Our party's pretty big now. There's like a hundred people yeah. walking with us. Remember when it used to just be four five, of us? Literally five. <laughs> Me, you, Pasquale, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, seven and a half. Got Dingo here. Quickest episode ever. Let's fucking go! Don't forget to like and subscribe.